Okay, kids and all you curious adults, uh, here's another teeny tiny tutorial from uh, NoS LLC. That's me. We're going to look at uh, latency in uh, telephonic transmission here. Now, this is an advanced subject, but it's still an introductory level because I designed this material originally for uh, my Kids Tricity 2 class. Um, and some of you listening may actually have um, the CD that comes with that class. Um, contains all of the lessons um, and a whole bunch of extra stuff on the CD. Uh, and if you bought the uh, complete learning package, you also have the SC500 Snap Circuit Kit plus the AM, AM plus the uh, um, analog multimeters and the digital multimeter. And you should be, if you are one of the lucky people who have one of those uh, learning packages, at least a little familiar with the stuff I'm going to show you in this uh, teeny tiny tutorial. But I've added a number of extra slides, so even if you are familiar with it, hang in here. You might learn something even more uh, exciting than what was on the original Extras CD. Okay, so here we are. Latency and transmission, what's that mean? Um, well, let's uh, explore that. Here we go. Now you might have a little bit of difficulty, those of you who are not familiar with these devices here, codec, uh, uh, data stream uh, processes, and time division multiplexing. So if you're not familiar with those, it might be helpful for you to go find them or review them or go up on any of the websites that talk about these things, most of which will not be nearly as good as this one, of course. But um, could give you some background. But I think you might still be able to hang in with me, so try hanging in with me here. Here we go. Latency. What's that mean? It just means delay. Uh, what does that mean for us? Well, it's not magic. There, the, the stuff that um, we're talking on right now, this this thing I'm talking to you right now, it takes time for my voice to go into the microphone, the microphone to turn it into electrical energy. That energy has to go down into my computer. It has to get to chopped up into little bits and turned into a digital signal. All of that takes time, although we certainly don't uh, recognize that in our human brains very well because uh, we're kind of slow compared to these little electromites. So no form of telephonic transmission is instantaneous. Even uh, uh, radio signals, which travel at the speed of light, and fiber optic, optic meaning light, travels at the speed of light normally, um, it takes time for even those things to get from one place to another. And when we back down to electrical signals on wire, just standard old telephone wire, these electrical signals move very, very much slower than the speed of light. So even the fastest, whatever that means in today's environment, the fastest systems introduce processing delay because as soon as the electrical signal goes into any kind of hardware, an amplifier, converter, switches, whatever, um, it has to get processed and that takes time also. So the delay is the time it takes for information to get from one place to another, including all of the physical transmission and the processing things. So that's what we're talking about is latency or time delay. All right, so you need a little bit of a history to follow where I'm going to take you now. Uh, for most of this history, switched, now we're talking about switched systems not dedicated private line systems. I spent many, many years working on those. Um, this is only um, going through switching environments. So in a switched environment, we typically broke the kind of information we sent from one place to another into voice and non-voice, which is what we would call today just data. So in the old days and still today, for the most part, we're, we're not actually where a lot of people think we are here, but uh, uh, in the old days, let us say, voice circuit paths had to be physically or electronically contiguous, that is, dedicated for the duration of the call. So when you picked up your phone and made a call cross-country, you were uh, creating what is known as a circuit switch connection because that path from your phone to the distant phone was dedicated to you for the time the call was up and no one else got to use that path. Now, on the very, very early systems, that was a physical path. That is, your wire was a physically connected to the wire going to your friend's phone, um, sometimes over very long distances. So it was easy to figure out that you had a circuit through a switch to make the connection. 
right? You yanked on your phone, their phone jiggled on the desk. Now, it's a bit of an exaggeration, of course, but gives you the idea what that means. Circuit switch connection, you own the path. Now, as the systems develop over the years, and we came up with these uh, digital transmission and switching systems, right? We had high bit rate transmissions, digits, bits, running through the network, right? Well, that's changed the requirement for this physical dedicated voice path for these calls. It gets a little bit tricky to figure this out, which is why I've done this very simplified uh, tutorial. So, moving on to this next bullet here. So, voice and non-voice, which once went, again, we'll just call data, can now be broken into small chunks, which are typically known as packets. Now, there's a lot more to it than this, but this is the word you hear all the time. So we can send these packages, little pieces of our uh, information transfer back and forth. We can send it over what's known as a packet switch connection. So we've got a circuit switch, meaning you own the path from end to end. And we have a packet switch, which means you're going to send little chunks, and you don't own the circuit from end to end. Right? That brings up a bit of a problem here for us, because these individual packets of an ongoing exchange can take physically different routes through a packet switch network that can arrive out of sequence. Now this is a major problem for voice, but it's a really minor one for data. Now how is that possible? Well, let's look at the next slide here and I'll show you a, kind of a generic network. So here's our generic network. I've got a voice call that wants to make a connection up here, and I've got a data call that wants to make a connection over here, right? And these are the network switching points, or if you prefer, in today's environment, because all this stuff is digital nowadays, we call it a router. It's a switch, a data switch, a digital switch. There's lots of different terms for it, depending on the specific network that you're going to be dealing with. But in my generic drawing here, this just means that this little guy is a switching point, and he connect, can connect this link to that link just by smacking them together. Right? Or he can connect this link to that link just by smacking them together. Right? So that's our switching point right there. Now let's look at a specific one. This is a circuit switch connection. This person over here has, has by dialing up the number and telling this, the, the network where it wants to go, the network has made a connection. You can think of it as a physical connection. Now, it's not, not anymore just a physical thing. If you yank on this phone, that phone won't wiggle. But you can think of it that way. So I've got a physical path now that goes up to this switch. This switch then connects my local link to this link here, which is called a trunk because it goes between two switches. So I get a trunk circuit, a voice path, goes up here, he connects that link to this link. I go up here, he connects this link to that link. I go over here, he connects this link, this trunk, over here to my local loop. And now this little electromite can say, the quick brown fox. Those words go through in sequence and come out here in sequence. So this little electromite hears the words, the quick brown fox all in sequence because we have a circuit switched connection through here. This path is maintained for the duration of the time that the call is up. All right, now how does that differ from this, a packet switch network? This time, this guy wants to send these little chunks of data. Here's a chunk, here's a chunk, here's a chunk, here's a chunk. So he starts sending, now this is once again massively simplified, but he starts sending the chunk, the. So he puts in the. Now this switch now is actually a router. So it says, OK, I've got this chunk, the. Where do I send it? Which one of these possible links is open at this instant in time? And he says, oh, well, this one is. So he links this one to that one and sends the. Now up here, the guy looks at this and says, oh, I've got the. And I need to send it out eventually to here. But he looks around and he says, well, which path can I take? Which trunk in the old voice world can I take? He says, oh, well, this one's open, so he sends it down here. This guy has to look at the and says, oh, which one's open? Oh, I like this one. He looks at it. The. Where do I go? Oh, this one's open. He looks at it. The. Where do I go? Oh, this one's open. 
this one's open. This one's open. This one's open. This one's open. This one's open. This one's open. And finally, boink, the comes out on this end. Now, meanwhile, while all that's taking place, this dude over here is getting ready to go this chunk of data quick so now he sends in quick he looks around at this instant in time that link is open he looks around at that instant in time that link is open he looks around and says I'm sending it so what do you think got here first you got it yeah quick got here before the did because this took physically longer to get through this network because maybe it went up to Alaska or something like that so this came in out of order, right? The quick brown fox came in jumbled up in this packet network. Now, is that a problem in data? No, it's not. And it's because you can delay data. There's no big deal with this. You can read this yourself. I'll just put this little video on hold if you like. But I'm showing you down here is that I'm sending this message, right? I'm sending this message. Hi, Mom. And you can see that the first thing in here, this would be like a packet switch, or I'm sorry, like a circuit switch where it's dedicated and it can't get out of order. So the first letter, H, got there first. The second letter, I, got there second. Third letter, right? They came in in sequence. Hi, space, mom, right? Like that. No big problem, but when they get mixed up, like what I just showed you, is this can come in here completely jumbled up, but in data applications, you can have this buffer, which is really a storage device, and you can save them up until the thing makes sense and then spit it out into this computer over here as high mom. So data information can be delayed get out of sequence in these protocol data units, and it's not a big deal, but it is for voice. Because this guy over here, John, is saying, you know, over here, he's saying, hello, Jim. Well, if you mix up hello and Jim, in this case, it wouldn't be too bad. But uh, if you get the voice pieces out of order, it's a big deal. So we have to be very aware of delay in our packet networks. Now, that's where we're going nowadays is into packet networks, right? So delay in digitized voice transmission Right? Pulse code modulation chops the voice up into these little chunks, which we could call packets, and sends those chunks out, but they need to get to the other end in sequence. Well, the newest systems now that we're using, right, the data systems, everybody keeps talking about these packet networks, we're sending these protocol data units, which could be pieces of voice, and if the pieces of voice get out of order in these IP or internet protocol networks, that's a problem. And you heard this on occasion in some systems where these chunks get delayed. So is delay a big deal for voice? Yeah, it certainly can be. Latency is a major issue that has to be dealt with in these digital kinds of systems. It's not a big deal in our um, data applications because you can store the stuff up and print it out. Very, very... Yep, looks like we're done. I'll talk to you on the next tutorial.